The Magic Show is brought to you by StarCityGames.com and check this out. On November 23rd and 24th, the StarCityGames.com Open Series comes to Providence with both a standard open and a legacy open featuring $10,000 in prizes apiece paid down to 64th place, 16 players qualifying for any of the next four invitationals, and live coverage all weekend long courtesy of SCG Live. This is a weekend you won't want to miss. So make plans to join us when the StarCityGames.com Open Series comes to Providence, and we'll see you there. Everybody and welcome to another edition of the Magic Show. Now this week we're back and it's time to talk Moto. For those who don't know, it's Magic Online with digital objects, something they call it during testing. They changed it to Magic the Gathering Online when it was released in the hardcores, just call it Moto. Internally they call it Mitko, but you know what Brian Kilbert calls it? He calls it crap and let's figure out why. Now first, Magic Online is a hell of a program. It has caused more ire, frustration, and upset feelings than I can even think of. I mean, look, just look at my own video history. I've made no less than three videos about this friggin' program and how we're all just shackled to the damn thing. I'm not kidding. As a community, we kind of treat Magic Online on some weird case of Stockholm Syndrome, falling in love with this thing that keeps our wallets and our minds captivated, and you know why? Because we love this game a lot. Hell, I just drafted Theros Online the other day, and it was great, but my random draft isn't going to lead anywhere outside the game, and that's why Brian got pissed, and that's why I'm going to focus on why he's right. The issues he correctly pointed out included an exclusive interview with Wizards' own Worth Wolport at the end of it. Let's go. Now, first up, Brian was playing in the Magic Online Championship Series, or Mox. You see how it sounds like, yeah, I get it. Now, anyway, what the hell is this thing? Let's let Wizards describe it. The Magic Online Championship Series is an annual series of events culminating in the Magic Online Championship. There are 12 seasons per year, each either four or five weeks long. Awesome! And what happens to the winners? The winners of each season finals were an invitation to participate in the Magic Online Championship and the opportunity to compete at the Pro Tour corresponding to their season win. Awesome! That means that each mox is like its own super PTQ ran every four or five weeks. Yes! And how much money did they give away at the last Magic Online Championship? $116,000! That's twenty five grand a first and an invite to the illustrious World Championships. Dude, let's do this. And so Kibler totally did. He went undefeated, in fact, and then, right when he was at the point when he could literally lose twice and still make it into the top eight, the event went like this. Yeah, the event was canceled. It sucked to be you. You lost out on 10 hours of your life. And how do we fix it? Oh, yeah, we ship you some packs and a promo scrub land. R- really, a promo scrub land. You trying to say something? Anyway, seriously, guys, Brian was understandably upset. I mean, well, you know, upset's a bit light. He was pissed. He was on fire, and he let the world know about it. With his infinite tweets and blazing articles setting everything related to Magic Online's impact on the real world and a big, huge, flaming thing fire stuff someone better get watsy some ointment for that burn i mean guys we've been here before this is not the first time magic online destroys someone's soul is a headline but kibbs is not your random magic player and honestly neither am i but i don't point out this crap because i'm happy about it and i'll wager that every wizard's employee is just as upset but guys for god's sake what is it gonna take to get some stability up in here or at least recoverability let me be clear i'm focusing on magic online's impact in the real world because every time it gets close kaboom. i mean look at the 700 person ptq the next day after kibler's mocks that's 21 freaking thousand dollars in entry people alone at one event on one day just so you know you're, you're getting an idea of what we're talking about here and it crashed. And when they go boom, and what is the answer? Makeup events. Lots of makeup events. Jesus, guys, do you even get what is happening here? You have a digital product that keeps digital records on digital tournaments that, for God's sake, surely have been placed in a database somewhere so you can easily restore the tournament to a singular state, right? Right? Because you realize that not having the ability to reboot a tournament back to the round before it went to crap is insane. Absolutely nail the pillows to the wall, baby doll. Crazy pants. And here's the real kicker. And here's the thing that just grinds my gears to an absolute fine dust. Tournaments crash in real life 
all the time. Do you think the programs that are running these big events you go to are perfect? That their data doesn't get corrupted? That weird things don't just happen? That someone's battery didn't give out in the middle of uploading a result? Because they do all the time. And the best scorekeepers in the business are held at very high regard amongst organizers because they know that bad things happen. And when everything goes pear-shaped, you have to rebuild the tournament from scratch and you have to do it right now. And this happens. Grand Prix have been crapped out of in the middle of round five. PTQs have died before the last round and even open series are no different. Bad things happen and people rebuild and the best in the business can give you plenty of horror stories and carry plenty of scars. It's not often but it happens and your judge staff works their ass off so you never even know there was a problem when things like this occur. I mean, imagine if this happened during Grand Prix DC this weekend. Software goes to crap. Tournament files are toast. The tournament organizer gets on the mic and says, oh, I'm sorry guys. We'll see you here next week for the makeup event. That is madness and here's the best part here's where the clouds part and the sunlight comes shining through because wizards totally agrees with us in an exclusive interview with executive producer worth wolpert we have a path forward Let's go to the interview. Now, question I ask, how do you feel about the current state of the premier level events on Magic Online, and what is your plan for fixing the situation? Worth says, it's not acceptable for the player experience with Magic Online to be anything less than ideal, and we recognize that the system has been having performance issues for quite some time now. As a longtime Magic player myself who spent many years on the Pro Tour, I understand that we need to deliver a world-class tournament experience. We have fallen down on that, and we are going to fix it. After the scheduled downtime on Wednesday, we are temporarily suspending all daily events premiere events, PTQs, and Mox events on Magic Online until further notice. The entire MTGO team is hard at work on long-term solutions as we speak. My next question. How does this suspension affect the 2014 Mox slash Magic Online Championships? Worth says, we will still be holding the Magic Online Championship Series 2013 event, but I don't have any further details to give you on that at this time. Similarly, we don't have any further details about the Magic Online Championship Series 2014 events. We will continue awarding qualifier points the QPs for top finishers and events along with continuing to grant qualifier points to both Hall of Fame and Pro Club members. Those qualifier points can be used to enter a special qualifier point only queue that will be available for one week at the close of each mock session. My final question is, what does a perfect MTGO Premier event system look like? That is, what is your ultimate goal for these events? And worth answers. A perfect system is one that can operate with 100% integrity, regardless of potential event interruptions. One that can handle the sometimes irregular nature of the internet and connections to games. What this really means is the ability to recreate both tournament state and card pool slash deck lists in a manner consistent with the tournament progressing as it should after an issue. Obviously, the nature of gaming on the internet is such that you are just going to have issues from time to time. The real solution here is a robust infrastructure that can handle a hiccup in a way that maintains the tournament integrity that Wizards and all Magic players rightfully expect. Wow, that's awesome. Now look, it's obvious that something needed to be done and soon and Wizards is right on board with stopping the bleeding, fixing the problem, doing it right and now. So kudos to Wizards for their incredibly fast response to this incredibly stressful situation and thanks again for their exclusive interview on the subject. I don't know about you, but I do feel better while staying cautiously optimistic. I mean, look, we all want Magic Online to work and Wizards certainly feels the same way. So what do you think about all this? Wizards is not a company that turns on blind blind eye to community issues, and this response is clearly that. So feel free to chip in on the feedback. Until next time, Magic players, this is Evan Irwin. Tap in the cards so you don't have to. like the fatties.